Eight, Oregon at seven, Washington. Are you surprised that seven, Washington is favored by three points? I'm not surprised. Anytime, two undefeated top 10 teams, Oregon going on the road. Um, Washington has looked every bit like possibly the best team in the country, um, depending on who you talk to. Um, I mean, it's, it's one of those things like the parody of college football right now kind of has Washington, Oregon. You got people thinking Ohio State might be the best team. You got people thinking mm-hmm. Georgia, Michigan, possibly Florida State. Um, even Oklahoma is in the mix now. So um, Washington has a great opportunity to, you know, kind of solidify themselves as one of those upper echelon teams this week. Also, Oregon. Big resume builder. Can you go into one of the more hostile environments on the West Coast in Seattle at the University of Washington and win um, in this traditional rivalry game? So maybe get a little bit of revenge. I mean, we all saw what happened last year. Oregon was the one who was kind of like playing for their college football lives later in the season last year. Washington goes into Austin Stadium. Michael Pinnock's big time throw late in that game uh, to tie the game. And then ultimately Oregon going for it on fourth and one in their own end with a backup quarterback and a backup running back. I mean, I don't know if I would have done it, but I get it. Um, And ultimately, that led to Washington being able to get in position for a game-winning field goal. So, um, anyway, really excited to uh, cover this game, go to the game, and uh, also preview it with you, Jack. This game feels like the Red River in terms of, like, the CFP, whether, like, win or loss for either team, if Oregon wins or if Washington wins. I think they'll be fine for the CFP. Like, Texas, they did lose to Oklahoma last week, but they got that Bama win. And they could still run the table and maybe get revenge on Oklahoma. For Oregon and Washington, you still got to play USC. You still got to play the Utahs, the Oregon States, the UCLA's of the world. So I feel as if a one-loss Pac-12, if one of them loses, or even if it's Washington that's undefeated, Oregon's a one-loss, they face each other again. Everything's in front of you, whoever loses this game, um, regardless of the outcome. But you've got the two fastest offenses, Cody. We got to start out with the quarterbacks because everyone wants to know, Quarterback guru, what does he think about both quarterbacks? Mm-hmm. Let's start out with Bo Nix. What have you been impressed about Bo Nix? This is a guy coming from Auburn that was terrible at Auburn. Didn't work out there with Harson. You could blame the coach. You could blame the scheme or whatever. Goes to Oregon as a new, different person. Doesn't turn the ball over. Runs the ball effectively, but passes the ball effectively too. What's impressed you about Bo Nix? And what does he need to do this game as well? I think the biggest thing about Bo Nix from last year in year one with Oregon to this year with Oregon, he seems a lot more in control and a lot more decisive with the football. Last year, you'd see him kind of sit in the pocket, pat, pat, pat. This year, he's taking three steps, hitting that back foot and letting the ball rip. And it's fun to watch because it's one of those things where you can, as a quarterback guy, you really get excited about quarterbacks that are being decisive, being aggressive, pushing the ball down the field. Um on the other side with Michael Penix, Michael Penix kind of the same thing, except last year, Michael Penix kind of took the bull by the horns and actually really elevated his game from when he was even at Indiana with Coach DeBoer. Um, and it was really fun to watch him excel with those good wide receivers and like better talent pool around him than he did have at Indiana. So kind of going into this game, Bo Nix especially, I think he has a little bit to prove. Stat for you, heard about this earlier this week, Bo Nix 0-6 on the road against top 10 teams. Two touchdowns, nine interceptions. Is he going to be able to get off the snide, not turn the ball over, avoid those early turnovers that kind of keeps the home crowd in the game and uh, not play from behind? Also, University of Washington, 10-0 and the last two years, 10-0 and at home, and the average score, 46-20. to Washington Ooh. absolutely boat races teams at home. So um, will Oregon be able to get it done? Will Bo Nix be able to get it done? Um, can Michael Penix rise to the occasion and solidify himself as a Heisman front runner? I don't know. We'll see. This has Heisman Trophy written all over it. Michael Penix Jr., what's impressed you? Again, he could have went to the NFL, stays one more year with his wide receiver core in, in Rome and in Polk and McMillan. What's impressed you with Michael Penix so far, and what does he need to do in this game? I think Michael Penix... I know that's really not his game, but I think he needs to use his legs. I think Bo Nix and Michael Penix are very similar in terms of athleticism and speed. Bo Nix is asked to do a little bit more with his legs. I think if Michael Penix can maybe rush for 40, 50, maybe even 60 yards in this game, third down scrambles, keep the chains moving and keep that Oregon offense off the field, I think that will directly lead to Washington being able to pull this football game out in the end. Washington ninth in the Pac-12 in rushing offense. So I agree with you. They do got to establish the running game with Penix as well as the running backs, Dylan Johnson and Will Nixon. Uh, I think that's something that's huge. I mean, 
Oregon's got the advantage there, Cody, with the running game. They're able to run the ball with Bucky Irving. Um, they've got to establish the running game for Washington there. Uh, some keys for Oregon, some, some things. Let's talk about Oregon and what they need to do. Um, the biggest thing, their safeties have got to prevent Penix from deep throws. We saw that against Arizona. They were able to do that with Penix. No touchdown passes. I believe they didn't have any explosive plays further than 25 yards. So that's one thing for Oregon. They've got to prevent Penix from those deep throws. Everyone loves deep throws. The crowd loves deep throws. You see some deep throws, explosive plays. It's going to get even louder there at Washington Stadium. Um, for this Oregon defense, I think they've got to test the offensive line of Washington. I think they got to rush four and they got to cover eight. I think they got to rush four. Um, this D line has been insane recently. Um, a little stat for you, Cody. Oregon's defense gets a sack 12% of the opponent's dropbacks on passes. That's incredible. 12%. Yeah, you know, um, as you said, Oregon, I don't know necessarily like how Oregon's going to do it, but I think that they're actually going to bottle up Washington's passing offense more than they have been this year so far. I mean, Oregon mm. uh, is the number five pass defense in the country right now. Now, is that because they're pressuring the quarterback? Probably. Is that because they're starting to get the ball out early and being able to rally to the football, bat, bat passes down, sit on short routes because their front four and front seven is getting pressure? Probably. Mm. But when you go up against the talent that Washington has, I think, like you said, rushing four and getting home with four and being able to drop seven in that is going to really be a big deal. Because at the end of the day, um, if you blitz and you don't get home on Michael Penix, those wide mm. receivers get one-on-one -on -one matchups and no one wants to face those Washington wide receivers one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, and I mean, they've got a really good defensive back, Oregon does, and Kyrie Jackson. Uh, he's allowed zero touchdowns this year, two interceptions. So that's a guy I'm looking forward to watching on the defensive side of the ball. But, Cody, this feels for me for Oregon, the coin toss. I think for the coin toss, they've got to take the ball first, set the tone Absolutely. for Oregon, silence the crowd. Um, I, I thought about this the other day. With the new sideline rule and the new first down rule and stuff, I feel like Oregon's going to run the ball more just to keep Penix on the sideline. I think they're going to keep him on the sideline and just try to keep that offense off the field, play keep away. Because I think if this, if this Oregon defense stays on the field for a long time and gets Michael Penix in this offense and gets tired, and let's say Mike Bo Nix gets a couple three and outs, it's going to be tough, you know, for that Washington, that Oregon defense to keep up pace with these wide receivers over there for Washington. Um, this 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 matchup's really intriguing to me, Cody. But um, just a couple, obviously, I think the key player for Oregon. It's got to be Bucky Irving. Can he run the ball effectively? And then for Bo Nix, can, it's going to come down to who can't turn the ball over. I mean, three to five plays each is going to decide this game for Oregon. But what sticks out to you, I guess, for Oregon? Offense, defense, what do they need to do to pull out this win? Yeah, you know, I think the biggest thing for me is Troy Franklin against the UW DBs. UW, a lot of people don't realize this, University of Washington is 109th in the country in pass defense. 109th. Ooh. So if, if offensive coordinator Will Stein wants to really directly affect this team run early to set up the play action and take your deep shots with Troy Franklin and Gary Bryant Jr. Um, down the field. I think Oregon is going to be in a really good position to possibly win this football game. So you've been at the stadium at Washington. Is there a side of the field that is louder than the other side? Get one in terms Absolutely. of or is it just the, all loud. So the student section is on the West end of the stadium and it mm. gets rocking down there. So if I'm Washington, I defer, or if they like, if they say Oregon wants to take the ball, we make them play at that end of the stadium because mm. it is going to be mm. rocking down there. I like that. It's a sellout, first true sellout at UW in a while. Um, I think since the last time Oregon was in town. Actually, no, it was actually a few years ago when um, Justin Herbert and a top 10 uh, Oregon team came in. So mm. um, first true big sellout in a long time. The crowd is going to be rocking. There's going to be celebrities there. There's going to be over 280 recruits in the building, which, as we know, with UW and Oregon both moving to the Big Ten, anytime you can get a jump on recruiting in those conferences, that's going to be a big deal. Um, man, can't wait. What a great setting. Uh, that stadium on Mont Lake. It's been one of the loudest stadiums I've ever been in. Um, I'll be honest. Last year, I took my kids to the Oregon-Michigan State game, or sorry, the Washington-Michigan State game. Um, when Michigan state was ranked in the top 10, um, it was ab like, it was loud that day. I can only imagine what it's going to be like for our Oregon matchup. Um, and both teams being undefeated and, in the, and, uh, ranked in the top 10.
Um, for the Washington side, let's talk about what they needed to do to win this ball game. Uh, I, again, I think they got to threaten the deep ball like they always been. The deep ball, we saw that against Michigan State. That really bit them. Uh, threaten the deep ball, spread the rock. They've got probably the best three wide receiving core in, in the nation. I think for Penix, he's got to play his game. Don't make all the impossible throws. And I like when, when uh, Joel Klatt talked about this. He's not a th- he's, Everyone talks about great throws, but he's a passer of the football. You know, Absolutely. 10-yard hitch route on the sideline, outside shoulder. Uh, inside dig, you know, throw it on his inside shoulder. A- anywhere where he's so smart with not only his reads and, you know, identifying blitzes and stuff like that, but being able to throw the football at the right spot at the right time to make his wide receivers comfortable and go up and make a play on the ball. But um, establishing the run game as well. But, Cody, when you look at this Washington team, what sticks out to you? What do they need to win? Uh, what do they need to do to win against Oregon? Yeah, you know, I think Michael Penix um, has shown throughout the year that he's not trying to force the football. Um, he does have two interceptions. However, um, against Arizona, I thought he played one of his better football games. And a lot of people will look at me crazy and they're like, what do you mean? He threw zero touchdowns. The reason why he played one of his better games is because he wasn't trying to force anything. He was taking what the defense was giving him. If you watch the game, I want to say he was like 30 of 40 or something like that. So 75% Mm -hmm. completion percentage for like 350 some odd yards. So that means he's averaging about 10 to 12 yards a pass, which is to me, hyper efficient and being very smart with the football. He threw the ball away when he needed to throw the ball away. He didn't make the big time mistake. And if he can play like that, and get Washington position to score. And Washington, you must score touchdowns when you get in the red zone. You cannot kick field goals against this Oregon team. I wrote mm. down here, Washington must score 40-plus to win this football game. You must score 40-plus to win this football game. At home, ride the momentum of this home crowd and allow, I'll just say, let Penix cook. If the running game isn't working early, you got a thoroughbred back there, and everyone knows your identity is throwing the football. Don't be afraid mm-hmm. to get away from throwing the football too much and too often. If Michael Penix has to throw it 60 times to win, throw it 60 times to win. Mm. A key player for me for, for Washington, we mentioned him before, Braylon Trice, one sack in six games. They have six sacks in six games. It's not very oh, good. Man. they got to get to the quarterback for Bo Nix and be able to contain him. But, Cody, who's a key guy for you? For me, um, I'd say it's Roma Dunes. Well, Jalen Trice, of course. I mean, we have to get pressure on the quarterback. I wrote down here, pressure the quarterback, protect the quarterback, University of Washington. Mm. Whatever Coach Ryan Grubb decides to do on the offensive scheme to make sure that Michael Penix stays upright, got to do it. If that means we're having the back stay in and chip, that means we're rolling him on certain plays, play action, just to make sure that that front seven is able to back up a little bit from Oregon and doesn't have to pin, doesn't get a chance to pin their ears back and rush. Um, I'll also say this, Roma Dunze, Jalen Polk, you guys out there are going to need to dominate against these Oregon DBs. We mm. said it earlier, Oregon is fifth in the country against the pass. That number has to go down this week if they want to win. If they want it to be close, I'll say that. Like mm. I said, Washington, you must score the football, and it all comes down to Michael Penix and Kalen DeBoer. Are you guys going to be able to directly affect this game and allow – that Oregon offense to stay off the field. If your defense plays 60, 70 snaps, you'll be fine. But if your defense is on the field for 80 plus snaps, University of Washington, you're going to lose this football game. Hmm. So Cody, who do you have winning this game and why your score, all the above God, this game is tough, man. I don't know who to pick. (laughs) I've gone back and forth on this so many times, but The efficiency, which sounds crazy because Bo Nix is actually leading the country in passing uh, completion percentage at 80%. Mm. The efficiency that Michael Penix is going to play within this, I think this is like, this is that like crowning moment. Like Washington kind of last year built up, built up, built up. They've kind of kept the momentum rolling this year. And it's like, okay, Washington, this is the game. And for me, Michael Penix is going to rise to the occasion. I think this is the game that kind of will define his legacy at the University of Washington. Um, And I think ultimately Michael Penix makes one less mistake, one less mistake. Maybe Bo Nix throws a pass that gets tipped and intercepted or he's running, struggling for extra yards and gets stripped from behind or something. Mm -hmm. One less mistake. Washington wins this game 42-38. Wow. 
42-38 Washington in, I think, what's going to probably be the game of the year. Damn. All right. For me, God, I've been back and forth on this one, too. Um, I like Washington. I love everything Washington's doing this year. I like Michael Penix. Um, I, I love the Kalen DeBoer and what they're doing over there, and these wide receivers. I'm a big offensive guy. But when it comes down to it, I think Oregon's more physical. I think Oregon can rush the passer. I think they've got a running game, Cody. I got to go Oregon here. I want Washington to win, but I got to go with my heart with Oregon. Plus, I'm down quite a bit in the picks. <laughs> So I'm either going to be down to me more, but I hate to be against my guy who's going to the game, who's from Washington, who lives in Washington, sort of, kind of, who's going to the game. But I got to go with Oregon. I think at the end of the day, Bo Nix, I'm so stoked regardless. I want a great football game. I'm going 38-35. I think it's going to be a little low, lower scoring game than what you said, but I'm going to go with Oregon. But I did not feel good about it. <laughs> hey, you know what? Oh. I don't feel great about my pick either. This is, I think in terms of like, Evenness, this is about, I think, of all the games we've seen to this point this year, this will probably be the most even game we've seen all season. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a pick em by by kickoff. Because right now, Absolutely. Washington's favored by three. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a pick em there. Man, I think they're under three. I think game. it's two and a half now. I think the line's dropped to two and a half. So it's like mm, even people, more. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> geez, the over-under is at like 66. So that yeah. game is going to be insane. 70,000 people packed. All packed up for this game. It's going to be sold out. Great crowd there.